This is a final review of the Chinese web drama Bin Bian Bu Shai Tang Hong Winter Begonia. Hi, you're watching Avenue X, where Zhang Qian good storytelling shares her thought, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Winter Begonia is a 49 episode web drama that has finished airing recently. I've done a first impression video, and today's video is my final thoughts and opinions about this drama. I would maintain my previous rating about this drama to goat mines, and I would even say that after watching the rest of the episodes after my first impression video, my opinion about this drama elevated even further. Although I wouldn't give it a three goat mines, I still would say this drama didn't disappoint. I enjoyed watching this drama a lot, and now it has become one of my on-file IKEA drama. If I ever need to do something for extensive period of time, such as drawing for a couple of hours or doing handcrafts, I need something on the side, making noises, I'll turn this drama on. Because I do enjoy the dialogues and the characters and occasionally glancing at the pretty nice visuals of this drama. So in this video, I wouldn't talk most about the stuff that I've already talked about in my first impression video. I would just make note of a couple of things I've noticed as I continue watching this drama and what I do appreciate about this drama at the end of it. It is really fortunate that after watching the whole drama, I can say it didn't have the biggest worry that I had earlier on, which is would it get draggy? I would say the drama is well balanced, although the pacing is never fast. So it has always maintained that very gentle, very assured progression of plots. It didn't really lag in anywhere significantly. I think this is due to that the script is written by the original author and the author did a lot of work adapting a written text to screen to create that support for a drama that needs to run close to 50 episodes. There are about three things I think I really highly do appreciate about this drama. The first being it is a very planned and thought out visual storytelling drama. In the earlier episodes, I didn't notice that that much, but as time goes on, I noticed that um, they've picked very particular camera language for this drama. Usually in today's Chinese drama land, you will see a lot of close-up shots, and which this drama does have a lot, but it also gives quite a lot of space to mid-ranged, wider shots that give you a better picture of the sets, of the details of the people in that scene. It also loves using still cameras, so the cameras hardly ever moves, which is very unusual for the contemporary productions. Often you see a lot of tracking shots, a lot of panging, a lot of zooming, stuff are always moving. There have been many, many occasions when I was watching this drama during a particular scene, for example, two people talking, and I was expecting the camera starting to slowly inches around, either tracking around or do some zooming. Like it's just very expected in contemporary drama and this drama wouldn't do that. It mostly just stays there. After watching that many episodes, it starts to give you this impression about older stuff, like old films old dramas, back in the days when things are 4 to 3 ratio. Because of the restrictions of technology and also the style preference at the time, dramas tend to stay very still. This drama definitely has money, has enough everything to move around, but they refused. They mostly stayed still. And I'm pretty sure it's a conscious choice. I don't know how many people notice that, but I think it's a pretty interesting way of visual storytelling to elicit that nostalgia from the audience. The second thing I highly appreciate about Winter Begonia is its very successful adaptation from its text form. Characters have been fleshed out more, certain characters have been changed, and the new characters added, so the story becomes a whole on screen on itself. There are first original new characters, such as the character played by Tan Jianci, Chen Renxiang. He does not exist in the original novel at all. And I am so happy that the writer added him in, not just to make the plot bigger and having more stuff going on, 
But this is such a successful and highlighting character because his original creation, I wasn't actually aware of his existence until he shows up on screen. I'm like, wow, Tan Jian Si is in this drama, really, really. If you've been my longtime audience, you probably know that I have special soft spot for this actor. This character is like an unexpected gift for me. It's very well written, acted out, having his own particular full arc. Character and obviously the fate of this character also breaks a lot of people's heart. The main characters of this drama also do get slightly changed and overwritten to adapt to the story's overall message and style. For example, one of our lead characters, Cheng Fengtai, played by Huang Xiaoming, in the book. He's a total player. He literally shares mistress with his brother-in-law, and there are、um, you know depictions in the book that shows he pretty much doesn't care about what other people think about him, and he definitely enjoys right life to the most. He's totally changed to this good family man, having strong morals, and that change of this character changed the whole under. Lying theme about the drama. In the original book, it does depict a very dark environment. The world is very hopeless. Maybe that's more close to reality of the period and of how people view, for example, opera singers and everything else in the world. But in the drama's adaptation, it does need to have a little bit positive look injected into it. It has to. Elevate almost every character, no matter how despicable, whether they are the antiheroes or heroes, to give them a brighter side, to give a part of their personality that forms this more three-dimensional people. It has a lot of those very higher-up values injected, but it's done in a very convincing and good way. That at the end of the drama, you actually really appreciate the ensemble picture that this drama has painted for you of a 1930s. Beijing, giving you enough hope and trust and inspiration about the good parts in humanity. So there's a splash of warmer, brighter color painted onto each and every characters compared to their book version. There are also changes that's made, I think, to create stronger dramatic conflict. And tug your heartstrings stronger. And I think for a visual storytelling's purpose, it is valid. For example, Xiao Lai, the character, didn't die in the book the way she died in the drama. She remained alive till the end, and it's a different person who died the way she died and caused Shang Shiri to marry that person after their death because he felt he's in debt. To that character, but it's not a major or important character. Also, the mistress Zheng Aiyu character, who later turned out to be Shang Shiri's biological sister in the drama, is not like that in the original book. I think that point is definitely deliberately changed and added to. Give Shang Shiri's character a little bit more background story. Also, give Zheng Aiyu a little bit more background story. Although we can argue, like how likely that thing can happen. And I do feel the change almost split Zheng Aiyu's personality into two. That doesn't make a lot of sense in terms of being consistent as a person. I would see it as a tiny spot that is a little bit problematic. It doesn't change my overall opinion about this drama's quality. Also, more peripheral characters such as the Cao. Father and son do not get that much importance, and their relationship is not that important or articulated as it is done in the drama. The Wang Ye and Ning Jiulang character in the book is just backdrop, but in this drama, they actually become a couple that a lot of people ship heavily, and they also do get the sort of ending, the conclusion of what they become of. In this drama, that are worked into this particular historical background, so it's a very successful, I think, adaptation. Even Cheng Fengtai's wife, Fan Xiangerr, played by She Shiman, in the original book, she is the old-fashioned Chinese woman at the time who maintains pretty much the same opinion. About Shang Shiri, about Xi Zi, that is very normal, standard of her time. Whereas in the drama's version, she has a very clear change from the beginning of totally looking at him、uh, with the contempt that is expected from the time to the end, appreciating the courage of this young man and the relationship that he managed to build with Cheng Fengtai, and how meaningful. And important that relationship is to her husband, so she accepts that. In turn, she actually becomes a more developed character. All in all, the way they adapted the original text to screen does remind me of what they did with the Untamed, which is coming from a web novel that is clearly BL genre that has explicit sex 
scenes written and very clearly telling that um, the two male leads have that kind of relationship to the version that you see on screen that these things never happen, pushing it towards very traditional, idealized Chinese friendship that is called Zhiji, know myself, know me, like the confidant, the person who understand me 100%. That type of very idealized friendship that happens between two people. And looking at these two years, two different dramas based on similar genre novel, how they got adapted to screen and whether they're successful or not, or how people reacted to it, in itself probably is a topic that's worth doing a PhD over. But with the finished product like Winter Begonia that I ended up seeing, I'm pretty happy with what they've done and how much work that went into it. The final product is something I think can stand the testing of time. Everybody is doing such a good job. Ying Zheng, Huang Xiaoming, She Shiman, all the other leading actors, they really have done the best they can and they've made this world very convincing for me. The two lead actors did get on really well on set in real life and that gets reflected on camera. Although they're both older, much older than their portrayed characters based on the book version. And initially, if you're watching this drama with that expectation, you might be a little bit put off. But as time goes on, I think they've done such a good job that I totally ignored that discrepancy and enjoyed their performance of these two characters. And can we just emphasize again how beautiful Ying Zheng looks with Jing Zhi makeup? I'm like, <gasps> he just has a perfect face for that kind of makeup, that kind of hair. I can't even think of another male actor who would dress up and put on that makeup and look that good that good. Not even like a lot of professional Jingji singers in China, male, who would look that good with the makeup on. Oh my god, it's just like art. It's like sculpture. Ugh. I can just stare at his made up face like for hours. Oh, it's so pretty. And the one final thing that I highly appreciate about this drama is it did bring Beijing opera to screen in that way that haven't previously been done so beautifully and specifically and almost as in itself a character. I have previously very little knowledge about Beijing Opera, but due to watching this drama and its go-along program called Yu Ni Tai Shang Jian, hosted by one of the most famous currently Lao Sheng female singer in China on ITE, I've learned so much about Beijing Opera that I was previously unaware of and become much more appreciative of this art form that is slowly going out of fashion. This drama did ignite some of my interest in Beijing Opera and I think if it has done that for other people, more people, then this drama has done something that's really good for keeping China's tradition and culture and some good stuff that our ancestors have created. So at the end of this review, I do want to ask if anyone wants me to do another video looking at specific Beijing Opera references that happened in Winter Begonia. I probably won't be able to pull out everything because I'm not an expert in it. There will be references that escape me and I also need to reference to a lot of other people's videos and content to make this video. But if you guys are interested, I can look into that and try to explain some of the scenes in this drama that are related to Beijing Opera and cannot be explained while the drama is ongoing, so it may escape you. But with a little bit more explanation, will help you understand the plot better. Do let me know if you want me to make a video like that. I do hope this drama is also appreciated by more people and if there are people who fell in love with Beijing Opera due to this drama, then I'm so happy that it happened. And I wish all the good luck for your journey of exploring Chinese Beijing opera. Thank you for watching Avenue X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.